Hello, internet friends, and welcome to my little lair. Haha. <laughs> All right, today I'm going to be modifying this here Jackson guitar. Okay, so what we have here is a Jackson JS22 guitar, 24 frets, uh, very basic humbucker pickups, uh, tone knob, volume, three-way switch. I guess you can call it a tremolo. I wouldn't really call it that, but good enough, I suppose. There's an interesting story behind this one. I ended up getting this at Winter Nam 2020. And the intention of this guitar is to be a modifying platform. So um, basically I just wanted the cheapest guitar I could get my hands on from Jackson. This is a guitar that retails for $199 US. And this is the seventh guitar I tried before I finally bought one. Because the other six were complete crap. So this is the first one that actually had Decent fret work on it. The tuners are complete garbage, but it sounds pretty good. If you've watched my channel for any amount of time and you saw the cover of Devil Driver End of the Line, it was this here guitar that did that cover. So um, it can be used, it is functional, it's just really bad. Like the uh, the low E, there's like a dead zone. It, it, really, they all have it. I don't know what they did aside from use the cheapest part you possibly can. So, not a big fan of it, but uh, I like the way the guitar plays. I like the way the neck feels. Pickups aren't bad. They could be better, but that's for a future project. So, today we're going to focus on these here tuning pegs. And what I have to replace them with are these bad boys right here. I'll hold them up. Oh, some uh, Planet Waves D'Addario auto trim locking tuning machines. So these are gonna be what goes in there. Uh, side note, they don't fit, but that's okay. That's why, <laughs> that's why we have this. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna modify the guitar because it's not exactly high end anyways, and uh, I want it to be a lot better. So, it's going to get a lot better. Okay, so I am going to begin. Now before I do though, I just wanna do something quickly here because my intonation is garbage on this thing right now, and uh, my action's not very good either. So I'm gonna make a couple of steps while I still have strings on this thing to, um, yeah, just adjust this down here because eh, not very good. So just loosen these off a little so I can make adjustments easier. Hopefully my top down camera angle is awesome. So it allows some proper visibility of the project. Okay, good enough. I'm also changing strings to a completely different gauge. So, uh, some of what I'm doing is a little bit, if I'm honest, a little bit preemptive, but uh, that's okay. I like doing that, it's fun. Okay, uh, that's a little too floppy. Okay, I'm just checking to see what I got here. I could use gauges and all that fun stuff, but uh, yeah, I'm not into that, so we're all good. I don't know what I did on this one. I don't know why I adjusted it the way I did previously, but uh, that's all gonna change. It's gonna get a lot better here, you know? Oh, that's completely floating, interesting. All right, 
That definitely needs to be adjusted on the other end. All right, then. Yeah, I suppose I got that here, too. Can never have too many screwdriver sets. This should be enough horsepower for this. There we go. Alright, I'm not sure why that was lifting up the way it was exactly. It's floating right now. Perfect. Or not. But anyways. Loosen it a little bit more. Hopefully we can get it to stop floating. Floating is not correct for these. The other ones do not appear to be floating. This is the only floater there is. There we go. Now she's not floating. Okay, good. Now I don't have a lot of tension anyways, but that's better. Okay, so we're gonna, we're gonna get this better adjusted. All right, now, that one will sit about there. That one roughly there. You want to have it so that the saddles roughly match the fretboard. And of course the fretboard's got a sort of natural curve to it like this. So you want each of the saddles to do the, you know, do the same sort of thing. Follow the same kind of exaggerated curve a little bit. Not dramatically, but the ones in the middle, the uh, D and E string, or sorry, D and G string, pardon me, should be, you know, roughly the high, or they should be the highest. And then everything else should be a little lower at least. I'll monkey with the uh, intonation after. But for now, I need to get these at least loosely in the right spot because I want some good action on this guitar, you know? I want it to play really slick. The strings I'm going to be using on this guitar are I'm not a huge fan of uh, Ernie Ball, but uh, they're going to be these guys. So I don't know if you can see that, but extra slinky 8 to 38. This is going to be my cheater guitar. Because what I want to do is I want to have a guitar um, that's really easy to play for leads. So I'm going to tune this baby up to E standard and it's going to be ideally my go-to lead guitar for recording. Alright, so I've got some basic first adjustments going on there. Uh, now I'm going to take these strings off. Ah, they're floppy enough. I'm not worried about it. Some people don't like to do this. Too bad. I don't find that this has any real negative effects on the guitar. As long as they're a little bit loose to start with. Um, this type of hardware doesn't tend to be all that uh, finicky either way. One other thing I was going to mention is that this nut is very poorly um set up the low e was quite high um i do wonder however if it was just the gauge of string it kind of looks like it actually kind of looks like it was the gauge of string and now that i'm going to be going to a significantly lighter gauge um i think that problem's going to go away let's see what happens I'm not going to bore you with all the basic guitar stuff. 
you don't know how to set up a guitar, maybe we can go over that at a later date. But there's many different configurations of guitars. This is just a very standard Strat style bridge. Uh, nothing, nothing fancy. There's no real magic to these ones. Sometimes they can be a magical pain in the ass, but you know, outside of that. That's about the only thing. String seems to have got stuck in this sucker. There we go. Oh yeah, beauty. Hopefully my uh, amazing camera work with the overhead camera will actually capture some of what I'm doing nicely. If not, then, uh, well, you're stuck with me in this camera angle. You don't see anything, oh, okay, good. Good stuff. All right. How's everybody doing this evening? Hopefully amazing. It's about uh, I don't know, 10.30 or so as I'm recording this. I just finished installing a garage door opener. Woo! Um, that was a giant pain in the ass. It went well, yes, but it was just, uh, ah. It was tedious. The way they did it before, they unfortunately had zero idea what they were doing. And uh, as a result, I had to replace literally everything except the door itself. Um, so yeah, it was kind of kind of long-winded. Probably took me about six or seven hours or so. But anyways, whatever, it's done. Now I get to work on a guitar. <laughs> Oh boy. Life choices, you know? Okay, so now we've got this sucker all cleaned up here. I usually give it a little a little brush down, you know, clean her up. I just use a toothbrush that's ideally not old and gross. Sometimes I use old and gross, but you know, eh. Just to get that schmoo off the fretboard there. Yeah, so about this guitar, um, purchased at Guitar Center on Sunset Strip in, I believe it's Hollywood? I don't know, wherever. And uh, yeah, they, they seem to actually care a lot more than the other uh, guitar centers. So they had one that was set up half decent. Fretboard's not perfect, but the uh, the fret wire is at least not sharp and it's not digging into my hand. So that is a plus. What I like to do with my guitars is I'll use this bore oil. I got this many, 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 many years ago. And uh, it works really good. So I just juice it on all the frets here. And then I rub it in to the fretboard to uh, add some moisture. And uh, after that, normally the neck stays nicely. What I'm going to do here real quick as well is just double check the neck itself. Make sure that it's reasonably straight. Um, there's lots of different ways to go about it. I have my own ways to do it for whatever reason. It's just always worked for me. But uh, yeah, I normally set the neck without strings on it. It depends what you're going with for string gauge though. If you're going with a really heavy set of strings, you can't really do that. But for me, I don't normally play particularly heavy gauge strings. Uh, common, common for me is C standard and I'll use 10 to 52s which is a bit on the floppy side, but uh, I like it. It's not great for drop B, but, uh, sorry, drop A sharp, I guess, or B flat, but, oh well. Good enough.
it depends which guitar I'm playing to. Like if I'm if I'm playing a guitar with a Floyd, um, I'll just kind of deal with the floppy string on the bottom end if I'm doing a drop tuning. Uh, if it's a guitar like this, where it's a you know strat style bridge or more of a I don't know stop tail or something that's not not a Floyd, uh, what I'll do is I'll probably go up to a 56 instead of a 52, and that'll give me a little bit better for a drop tuning. All right, so it's nice and juicy. And I'll just leave it that way and let it uh, let it settle out for a little bit. Give her a little give her a little white. It's a satin finish on this guitar, so eh, doesn't look amazing at this point. It's only about a year old, but uh, in the words of Taylor Danley, I like satin finishes because they wear faster and they actually look like they're you know, well used quicker, which I completely agree. Nothing worse than having a guitar that, you know, you're, you're scared to play because it's like, oh, but every time I play it, it, it makes it look like crap. Well, whatever. It's a guitar. It's meant to be played. It's not meant to be a showpiece in a museum somewhere. You know what I mean? Yeah. So we'll let that soak in. And let me just see, oh baby, the neck's pretty straight. There's a slight, and I mean ever so slight bow in it. Ever so slight, I don't think it matters. Yeah, I don't think it matters, should be fine. Okay, now, oh man, this is gonna be deadly. Pull out the wrenches, and now, oh, side note, this video is not sponsored. I'm nowhere near that point. Um, this is actually a pretty cool stand, um, guitar, you know, workstation assembly. Uh, it comes from Music Nomad. I just picked it up uh, at Sweetwater. Um, if I had affiliate links, I'd put them below. But uh, not quite there yet either. But uh, you know, it's it's pretty sweet. It's got a it's got a neck rest like this guy here, um, which you can use in a number of, number of different ways. I think that one's yeah, that one's scooped a little bit more. Um, just depends what you're working on and how you're working on it and stuff. But it's nice to be able to support your instrument in the right way. If you had an acoustic, you can support it that way. It'll give you the right angles to work on it at. And, uh, you know, yeah, much better. Okay. What? Seriously? Okay, what size was this then? Three eighths. That doesn't make sense. I'll be right back with another tool. I feel like a tool right now. This better be the right size, damn it. Oh, yeah. There we go. Coincidentally, that wrench is basically the same size as this, but I guess 3 8 isn't exactly 10 millimeter, even though they're very close to the same. So, uh, yeah, I guess I needed 10 millimeter. Oh, well, I like power tools anyways, so it's all good. All right, so basically these are just sleeves that or I don't know, maybe you can see it better on there. These are just threaded sleeves that fit over the uh, tuning peg. Then they got these little washers on here. I'll probably use the top angle so you can actually see this. And I do believe on this one we've got little set screws on the back and we do. Okay. So for those, I'll just use good old hand tools because I don't have a screwdriver bit quite that small. At least not handy. Okay. 
Let me put this thing together a little tight. But this screwdriver can get it, so we're good. Now these are actual Jackson tuners, but I mean, compared to the Jackson quality that I'm familiar with, no. This is, Fender spent some money on some super cheap gear and said, hey, let's call it Jackson. And I'm sorry, I can't say that I have enjoyed Jackson instruments for a very long time. The ones that I particularly like are made in Japan, Jacksons. The USAs from the 90s and 80s are really good as well. But I really like the made in Japan ones. They're priced decently well or were. And you got an incredible instrument. Um, my main guitar is still a Jackson from 94 and most of the hardware is original with the exception of the fret wire. I did have that changed out for stainless steel hardware. Uh, the pickups were really good. I put EMGs in it, but that's gonna change. And uh, yeah, I'm actually waiting to hear back from Rich down at uh, Voodoo Custom Pickups. And we are looking at putting in a customized Greg Campbell Alchemist set in my main Jackson. And hopefully I, I, I dig it. I think I will. It sounds like it should be wicked. I met Greg down at Summer Nam and he's an awesome dude. And when I found out he had a custom pickup, we talked about how it sounds and what it's meant to do and had a chat with truck driver Sean as well and truck driver Sean knows a lot of gear Greg knows a lot of gear too and uh, yeah I had my guitar there so they were able to give me feedback based on what I actually have and what I actually play and they said if that's what you like this is exactly what you need and they suggested the alchemist is going to be perfect for me um, and I believe they're right so, I don't know, I'll have to see. You know what, I could be surprised. There's a chance this could be a similar size. I'm gonna take a look here. So as you can see, I took the six screws out and now we're ready to pull these guys out of here. Little different configuration, but you know what? Oh, moment, moment of truth here. You ready for it? Oh, I don't even have to drill it out. Look at that. Mint. It's it's like I knew what I was buying. <laughs> I just I just guessed. I really did. That's actually super cool. Okay. Well, um, even though these say Jackson on them, they're going straight in the garbage, man. These were definitely the worst tuning pegs I have ever seen on any guitar. And uh, if, if Jackson guitars or Fender, Fender, whatever, Fender guitars, Fender instrument company, if they're listening right now, you can take that to the bank. The hardware you use on these cheap Jackson guitars is crap. Like pure garbage. It is not worth using. Um, I'll say the screws probably look pretty similar. Outside of that though, no, man. These, uh, yeah, these are crap. Pure crap. Yeah, I'm just going to literally throw this stuff out right now. <laughs> like, I've bought stuff from China that was pretty cost effective. And I've had it be a lot better than what came on this guitar, which I can only assume was made in China as well. But certainly quality was not the priority with these tuning machines. Garbage. All right. Now I got a, you know, six aside set. So these are all gonna be the same. And it's just a matter of pulling them out of the friggin' packaging and Loading them up in the uh, in the holes there, and I got to tighten them down, and 
I can put new friggin' strings on. Simple as that. Okay. Bunch of cardboard stuck in there, but anyways. Seems to work well. Hardware seems decent quality. I'm sure there's probably better locking tuners out there, but for what I wanted to pay, I think this will do the trick. The one thing I did notice with these is that they do appear to be very similar in design to what came off of this guitar. Um, these actual tuning machines, maybe they're slightly different dimensions, but I mean, they're going to work just fine. Screw hole seems to line up beautifully. Like I said, somehow the, uh, the shaft is the same size. Cool. Nothing like having a properly sized shaft. Okay, uh, for all intents and purposes, I'm just gonna use the existing screws because I know they fit. Just gonna put these bad boys back in. Maybe it's not exactly the same. Seems like it's very close, but not exactly the same. Oh well. I am okay with that. They're on a slight angle. Should be alright. If not, oh well. They might firm up a little and go at a slightly better angle if I've got them tightened down. Oh no, that one's going fine. I don't know. It's probably me. One thing I've learned over the years is that if you just assume it's, it's you, then you sort of put a lot less blame on other people and it's just a lot easier, you know? It's like, yeah, it was probably me. I probably made a mistake. Life just gets a lot easier at that point, you know? The more you know. Okay. Yeah, they seem to line up good. Pretty much the same hole. I know it's the same hole, but it seems to be... It seems as though the screws are actually going in pretty straight. Trying to make sure they're nice and Nice and beautifully lined up so they don't interfere with each other. The screws on the back really aren't meant to hold it in place so much, just to give it a second anchor point because the, uh, the top side, um, the nut on the top side is the main thing that holds these guys in. But if you can have them sort of pre aligned, it just helps. Suppose I could move these out of the way. Not sure if you guys like staring at my tools or not, but anyways. For a lot of this, I'm probably using the top down view anyways. Because then you'd see my face otherwise. And that's like probably torture or something. So, far better off just seeing my hands and the guitar, you know? and these tools strewn all over this table.
or I could make like lots of stupid concentrating faces and you guys would be like, why am I watching this? Actually, kudos. If you're still watching this, man, you've got, uh, you've got some patience there. Or you like torture or something. Something like that. But you never know. Some people like to watch weird things. I'm not going to judge. I'm just not going to do ASMR because uh, I think that's a little bit bizarre. Okay, so I'm on to the last screw here. Beauty, she's almost in there. Now I'm going to flip it over. Probably just make sure these are uh, at least somewhat loose here. There we go. So we're string ready on the other side. Beauty. Okay, let's flip this guy over. Oh, still got lots of lots of juice on the uh, fretboard here. Give it a quick little uh, rub. Try to even it out and make sure that when it does dry in, it's good. I normally just let it soak in, even though I realize this is lots. Whatever. This guitar hasn't really got a lot of love. And, uh, you know, I want the fretboard to continue going for a while. Even though you can't see it, but uh, right there behind the camera is another neck for this guitar. <laughs> Um, yeah, I may use it at some point, I don't know, it's just a cheap neck I bought, curious to see if it's actually uh, worthy or not, but it seems to be pretty much the same as this. I may actually modify this and or that or both, because my favorite Jackson variety has a, well, the neck is a little different than what's on this guitar because here is sort of just a standard sort of Fender Jackson neck. What I really like are the 90s very thin necks. The, uh, the neck on my Jackson Stealth is, from what I understand, the thinnest neck that's ever gone in a production guitar, at least from like a major manufacturer. So. Whether that's correct or not, I'm not 100% sure. But if it is, then it makes sense because I've played lots of different guitars and nothing feels as thin as the one that I have. So, yeah, it's a really nice neck if you like thin necks. Like even thinner than the most ridiculous Ibanez ones I've ever tried, so. All right, oh man, this thing looks mint. It's $200 of mint. Like. Okay, so what we have here are these little washers. So those are gonna go on there first. Coincidentally, there's six. I wonder why they did that. Maybe it's because there's six strings on a six string guitar. Oh, holy crap. All right, and then we put the nut I'll carefully put them on one at a time. Due to the due to the studio lighting, I can't see a damn thing. But uh, that's okay. Sometimes it's better to go by feel, anyways. You know. Oh, speaking of which. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of AMT Electronics, but they are a guitar company, guitar electronics company out of uh, Omsk, Russia. They're the reason why I went to Summer NAM 2021, and uh, I just placed an order through their worldwide store. And I'm very excited because uh, uh, a YouTuber you may or may not know named Brian Bauer happens to have 
a box right now and it's got it's got some pedals they make a really cool unit um, it's called the bricks pedal and it's a tube based uh, guitar pedal so it can be used as a preamp or as just an effect pedal and they are freaking cool and I uh, I can't wait to try them well I've already tried them uh, but I can't wait to actually play them in practice on that actual with my actual gear, my actual speakers, actual guitar, everything else. Now some of you may be wondering, holy crap, you're using power tools on something, um, well, as delicate as that? Hell yeah. But with this guy here, I can adjust the power settings. So that's actually what I did just before I started using it. So it's on a very light setting and it's not gonna over tighten. I made sure to I made sure to uh, tighten them on first properly, making sure they're not threaded. If you ever use power power tools and try to thread a nut onto a bolt with the power tool, you're probably making a mistake, and you could very well thread that screw and probably break something. So be very careful to hand tighten everything first before you ever get into using something that's actually powerful. I'm just going to take this uh, ratchet wrench here and double check my torque. I just want it to be tight. I'm not too concerned about having it like holy crap tight, but tight enough. I want to feel like it's actually holding on nicely. There we go. Come on, get on. There we go. These are very shallow nuts. There it is. Okay, good. All right, I just want it snug. Nothing crazy. Feels good to me. I'm also using my weekend, so it's not gonna be like super ridiculously tight. And there's probably people out there that are gonna be like, all right, you shouldn't do it that way. Cool, right on, thanks. Not that I'm not willing to listen to people and learn, I just, uh, you know, I spend a lot of time doing a lot of mechanical things and uh, I feel comfortable with operating in this way with this hardware. And at the end of the day, it's a $200 guitar. What do I care really, you know? Uh, yes, I want it to play nice. Yes, I want it to be a good instrument, but uh, you know, sometimes you just wanna have some fun too, you know? To some people spending their Tuesday night working on a guitar might not be the most exciting thing in the world, but uh, you know, you just, you gotta do it sometimes, you know? Okay, so all I'm doing here is lining it up so that all of the string openings are reasonably in line with where my string's coming from. And I was going to consider filing the nut slightly, but I don't think I need to because when I look at it, it's pretty even. Okay. And now that I'm using these guys, it's going to fit. All right. And now a word from our sponsor. There, there is no sponsor. This video is brought to you by 
me. That's pretty much it. Yeah. Okay. So we're starting with the 38. It doesn't really matter which side you start on. I know people start on either side. I don't really care. I tend to put them all through first and then just uh, pull them through. I'm going to use my hardware here to help me out a little bit. Oh, look at that. Well, it went through. Amazing. 38. Uh, we'll go like that. Yeah. I'm not going to go through everything in this video as far as um, intonation and all that fun stuff, but, uh, you know, oh, give me a break. this is where it gets exciting sometimes. And you actually have to push these back. There it is. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. And if you bear with me a moment, I'm going to restart my cameras. At least these ones. Not the new one. But he might just got his hands on uh, a brand new camera. I bought mine through his affiliate link, but uh, yeah. He's in Toronto. Unfortunately for me, I'm not, and uh, that means that it's gonna get to me a lot slower. However, I wanted to make sure I was gonna get it on time, and my scheduled arrival date is August the 30th. So I wasn't comfortable shipping it here, because I won't be here August 30th. So, instead, I sent it to somebody whose last name rhymes with power. And uh, much like the pedals, that also is gonna be waiting for me, which is actually really cool. So, thank you again, Mr. Bauer. Uh, really looking forward to heading heading out your way and uh, we're gonna do some cool stuff and this guitar is gonna go with me because there might be some things we're working on maybe you never know and if there happen to be things that we might be working on it might involve this instrument or the other instrument that he has so we'll see I'm just excited in the music world right now, you know? It's been, it's been many years of not doing anything at all in music. Nothing, nothing. And I just released my first ever um, song. Cool, you know, like, why not? You gotta, you gotta get your music out there. And uh, I am, literally the worst for being my own worst critic and uh, as a result here I am at 40 almost 40 almost 41 I shouldn't say that out loud um, and I just released well technically my band back in like 1999 released a CD that we, you know, we recorded, we literally burned it on disc. Um, you can't really call that a recording per se. That was the last time I did anything that actually went live outside of like a couple of YouTube videos. Um, nothing's been original, nothing's been anything so I'm just happy to actually be playing 
Holy crap. Hmm. That's interesting. Well, um, I'm probably going to need some epoxy. Because I see an issue with my wonderful cheap do uh, 199 guitar. Um, it looks like, and it's going to be really hard to see on camera, but maybe, maybe it'll be possible. I'll try to point it out here. Right over here. I don't know if you can see that in the camera angle. But right over here, this is literally a hole in the fretboard. So if you take a look, you can see... Uh, there's a few marks in the fretboard, actually. I might have to do a little bit of repairing. But anyways, um, you've got the in the inlay right in here. This uh, I'm sure it's not Mother of Pearl. It's some cheap, fake knockoff, but whatever it is. Whatever this inlay is, in that corner right there, there I guess there wasn't enough material and it broke off. Um, I never noticed that before. And then this one's got a divot. And there's a little divot over here. You know what? Guitars are meant to be played. So uh, I'll just make it work. Okay, now it is time to start loading these babies up. too many guitars that actually have locking tuners on them. They do make this process nice and quick. But I still like to follow some basic guidelines where you, uh, you know, you want to have a tiny bit of something on there. Tiny bit, at least. You want to wrap your normal way. And, uh, yeah. Oh, there she is. She's cut off. I'm going to lock her in place. String should stay nicely. And, uh, well, that's nice and quick. All right, string number two. Now, if I was a guitar tech right now, I'd be like, hell yeah, locking tuners. Hell yeah, locking tuners. Much nicer than the crap that was on here. Okay, give it a little, give it a little toit. Oh, and she's cut just like that. What I always like to do with strings as well is uh, I always grab them and I stretch them real good. Pre-stretch the strings. Frick. Okay. All right. So now we have. Two strings on this baby. Now, I am noticing that there is a reasonable height difference here. I'm gonna adjust this guy a little bit. There's gonna be a bit of monkeying around before I got this thing ready to roll. I'm gonna to have to uh, monkey with the intonation, plug it into a tuner pedal and see what we get. Um, 
This may actually have to go up a little. in tune. Getting close. Okay. I do like the speed at which I can hammer for these. Much better than a standard set of tunics. Big fan. How about stuff? And I got a chain about the uh, the nut here. It looks pretty good. Uh, no, I don't. Yeah. Okay. No, that's pretty good. I feel like I almost know him. Not pretty. I'll leave it. I'll get it. Okay. You guys are getting a, a bonus waffle on here with me on on how to go up side of the car. I love those on it. Stretch the crowd these. Don't be able to break. Now, well then, let them break. Because um, they break now, they're not going to last for the enemies. So, um, yeah, I just stretch them up. Because otherwise, they're there for dinner. They're going to be annoyed for a long time. But those are things trying to uh, sell in. Oh. Oh. Okay, well, whatever. This one had a little wine on it. Hmm, yeah, we got it. It's a little tool. I didn't pull out all the uh, socks on there. Get out of this case. Whoa. Those are very sunny. Very, very sunny. Hey, but you're very sunny. I know. Let's go. Let's go. Okay. Oh, baby. We're on the high heat. She's almost there. Give her a good old stretcheroo. Bam! Oh, now it's uh, a little wet fretboard, but that's okay. I'm cool with that. Beautiful. Uh, action is much better. Holy crap. Um, one thing I always like to do is actually walk through the whole fretboard uh, and see. Oh, sounds mint. But it seems to play pretty good, and that's the main thing. So looking at this. Eeh, no, that's not ideal. Um, okay, the middle are a little too high. I have to drop these babies down a little. I could have accurate tools and measure stuff, but it's less fun that way. A lot of the things I know about guitar I learned from either couple of music teachers or just learn it on my own. Just figured it out. And a lot of times that's the best way to do it. That looks pretty gnarly. Okay, my tuning is totally out to lunch, but I kind of like how that is. Kind of like a violin or cello. You've got the low strings you kind of play this way, and then the top ones you play this way, and then the high ones you play like that. But uh, let me get a friggin' tuner on this thing, all right? Because this sounds awful. Unorthodox, but deadly. Okay, so what I'm doing, is my acoustic Fender amp has a tuner built in with this wonderful pedal. So therefore, I am going to tune this guitar that way. Oh, I bet you it's gonna sound amazing on an acoustic amp. Okay, that was not good. All right, we're back. <laughs> Microphone feeding back something fierce.
Hopefully you can see that in the red. I can't see it because I don't see the light. Huge everything series. Huge. Huge. Green light? No. That's too bad. Right, e. Go flat. So let's do this. Very gross. is completely out, out of whack. So now I gotta go. That's close. It's close, it's not quite there though. Okay, so if that's flat, that means this length is too long. So, time to shrink that part a little bit. Now the reason for that, if you're not familiar, is when I play open, I get the full length of the string here. When I play on the 12th fret, I'm looking at this section. If this is flat, if this is lower, that means that the length between the 12th fret and here isn't quite right. It's a little bit too long. So if you weren't already aware, that's what intonation is all about. It's getting it so that the fretboard is relatively in tune in all locations. Okay, that's gonna be close. He's in tune. The harmonic is in tune. The note is mostly in tune. Where does it drift? It drifts flat. So again, slightly long. Just gonna do like maybe a half a turn or so. Something like that. And now we'll tune it back up to pitch. Okay. Note is flat. It's close, but it's still a bit flat. A little farther. Okay. Okay, it's getting there. Uh, action's pretty low. I feel like it's slightly too low on the A string. Uh, just a little, not much. That could also affect the intonation slightly.
Okay, well, <laughs> not gonna be much of a riff machine, this guitar, that's for sure. The reason I say that is because I can play it out of tune really easily. Okay. What? Note. A little bit flat. Man. This whole guitar is a little bit flat. So, previous to now, it was not separate at all. So, I'm going to take the tune at Yep. It's close. I'm going to say it's not quite there yet, though. Do a little more loosening. Shimmy it along. D. Nice harmonic. Beauty. Moving on to G. Moving on down to G. That's a G right there. Harmonic sounds good. Slightly flat again. Holy crap. Let's uh, shimmy this bad boy down a little. Okay. Yes, sir. Flat. Yes, sir. Flat. Flat. Yes, sir. Flat. 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 Jackson JS22 gets an upgrade. I'm not sure how much of that I'm actually going to show you, all the upgrade process. I might just put it in fast motion and make it look funny. But uh, yeah, here's the back. Maybe you can see that in there. I don't know. Maybe, hopefully, I don't know. Whatever. Good enough. Yeah. So, I now have... Significantly better in 
intonation. Um, way better tuners. These things are actually really slick. I gotta give them credit. They're locking and they're also auto trim. So you start turning and boom, string gets cut right away. Um, I only screwed up on one of them because I didn't quite have all the string pulled out of this way first. But uh, yeah. <laughs> will improve this guitar significantly oh holy crap all right well on that note a sour one a very sour one anyways on that note i'm out of here peace bitches we'll see you in the next video